Good afternoon. Uh, so, my name is Marcus Gulland. I'm a story smith in different areas. The moment I know how to write, I started to write, and I do this all my life. Uh, I worked for a lot of uh, brands all over the world uh, throughout the last three decades I'm in this business. Uh, just uh, one thing, um, excuse me, I have to use some explicit lyrics like the A bird, uh, as in advertising, or the F word, like in fuck advertising. And uh, there's no bullshit zone, so uh, we have to be very clear talking about story, talking about advertising. Nobody knows anything, as William Goldman uh, told about Hollywood. Nobody knows anything. If anyone tells you he, who no, he knows how story works, how movies work, how advertising work, you can be sure you're talking to a liar. So, campaigning needs story. Um, this is what I found out. This is what I think how it should be done, but I know I don't know anything. Uh, let me start with a personal story. It's about uh, when I turned into a superhero. A different classes then. Uh, it was in uh, March 2002 in New York City. I was attending a workshop um, dealing with uh, building multi-dimensional characters. And it was very interesting for me uh, because um, in, in our advertising world, we were always talking about let's build brands that are so fami familiar to the customers like a good friend, so, uh, and I was at attending this workshop and, and it was uh, all of a sudden something popped up in my head that these crafts and tricks and techniques to build multidimensional fictional characters are quite similar to the tools and tricks we use building brand characters. And I kept my two worlds, the creative writer and the advertising guy, separate from each other. And in this workshop, I thought, you have to intertwine them. That's genius. That is genius. And I said, this has to be called hero branding. And the subline has to be what makes brands heroes and heroes brands. Wow. I'm a genius. I totally fell in love with me. Uh, but it was the worst idea ever. It's totally wrong. And I'll show you why. We think first of vague words that are synonyms for progress and pair them with footage of a high-speed train. Science is doing lots of stuff that may or may not have anything to do with us. See how this guy in a lab coat holds up a beaker? That means we do research. Here's a picture of DNA. There are a shitload of people in the world, especially in India. See how we're part of the global economy? Look at those farmers in China. But we also do business in the USA, or want you to think we do. Check out this wind energy thing in Indiana, and this blue collar guy with dirt on his face. Also, we care about the environment, loosely. Here's some powerful rushing water and people planting trees. Our policies could be related to these panoramic views of Costa Rica. In today's high-speed environment, stop-motion footage of a city at night and cars turning quickly makes you think about doing things efficiently and time passing. Lest you think we're a faceless entity, Look at all these attractive people. Here are some of them talking and laughing, and close-ups of hands passing canned goods to each other in a setting that evokes community service. Equality, innovation, honesty, and advancement are all words we choose from a list. Our prophets are awe-inspiring, like this guy who's looking up and pointing at a skyscraper or a kite while smiling and explaining something to his child. Using a specific ratio of Asian people to black people to women to white men, we want to make sure we represent your needs and interests 
or at least a version of your skin color in our ads. Did we put a baby in here? What about an ethnic old man whose wrinkled smile represents the happiness and wisdom of the poor? Yep. Brands are heroes. Wonderful movie made by Ken Reich. So since 1864, when J. Walter Thompson founded the first advertising agency on the planet, since then we are doing everything right. We have $520 billion plus in advertising spending every year. Nobody can tell us that's too few money. We use every chance to chase people, to separate them from their money. We create new media, we track, we count, we measure, and we revise, improve, and hone our campaigns. We trim our budgets for efficacy, and that works perfectly. The TV turned family, the family circle into a half circle, wonderful. Actually, that worked perfectly. TV ratings are steadily declining, print media are disappearing, we say, let's go mobile, super cute idea. Facebook ads are still ineffective. Google released uh, some months ago an uh, interesting number. 56.1% uh, of our internet ads are not even seen. Let's go mobile. People pay to avoid ads. They have that. Is anyone in here who like, likes these pre-roll uh, movies on YouTube? Uh, there has to be one person, I never find it. So, everybody likes this. For a good reason. This is what advertising is supposed to do. Seducing. And this is what advertising actually does. Stalking. And stalking is, has never been the fountain for a good relationship as far as I'm in front. Brands are thinking that consumers are property and they are relying on numbers. And Bill Birnbeck said 50 years ago that this will be a disaster. 50 years ago, we need interesting stories, we need interesting stuff. Um, Howard Gossage said it like 50, 60 years ago. Nobody reads an ad. People read what interests them. Maybe it's an ad. And the internet changed everything. People are in power now. They say we are not seats or eyeballs, or users or consumers. We are human beings, and our reach exceeds your grasp. Deal with it. Ever came across the Clue Train Manifesto, 1999? Fantastic book. You can check out then the, um, the um, thesis of, of the Clue Train Manifesto on the internet. Fantastic. It was updated like two years ago. Um, yeah, that's it. People don't fucking do what we want. They do what they want. Oh, people started a conversation 24-7 all over the world. People find new ways to share information. They share only relevant information. What's relevant for them? Real people decide what's said and heard. Markets are conversations 24-7. Markets get smarter and faster than companies. Every brand, every organization, every company has totally lost the control over their communications. Brands don't belong to the companies, don't belong anymore to the companies. In other words, if you do advertising or marketing communications in the way we used to do it uh, like 150 years, that's you on the chase for your prey, also known as consumer. And that's the truth. Welcome beyond advertising age. We are in a time beyond advertising. Why? Because we use the wrong tools. We use the right tools wrong. 
and we try to solve the problem with the same methods we created them. How can that work? So what's next? The only thing that will work, the only thing, is story. Why story? Every human being is, I would say, all his or her life on the chase to the answer to the primal question. Who am I? Everything people do, say, decide, root for, long for, tell, want to hear, is to find out answers to the question, who am I? And stories ask questions. Stories share experiences. And finally, hopefully, the question, who am I, turns into, this is who I am. Stories are providing orientation in this disaster we call life. Brands are providing orientation as well. But only if a brand is relevant, only if a brand has meaning. Maybe you came across the Meaningful Brand Index by um, Harvest Communications. They make a, um, a survey every year amongst uh, truckload of people and uh, 3,000 brands, I think, all over the world. And they have uh, found out uh, in, in several uh, circles, the personal well-being, the collective well-being, and the marketplace, there are different items. Uh, they found out brands with meaning perform way better. 100% more KPI outcomes, 46% more share of value of all that. And on the stock market, they outperform like 133%. This is huge. And Unilever, uh, this company is not really known for being the tree huggers. Uh, they say we have two brands with purpose in our portfolio. It's Dove and it's Ben and & Cherries. And they grow twice as much as every other brand. So this is about money, about success, about surviving of, of a company. So what is a relevant story? What is a relevant story? Um, let's figure out, Philip Madadana goes to a bookstore, and um, which story would interest him? Which book would he buy in an instant, the moment he sees it? Guaranteed. It's not about campaigning. It's about him. If he sees a book all about Philip Maradona, he would buy it in an instant. The story of you is relevant. And John Steinbeck put it, if a story is not about the hero, he will not listen. This is the most important thing. The story has to be about the hero. The story about your brand can't be about your brand. Never ever. Are you producing a video like I showed you before? And this is a radical shift of perspective. So, hero branding, after several years of working, I found out that it was totally wrong way. Brands are heroes is the wrong way. Brands make heroes is the right way. Never put your brand at the center of your story. Always put people as heroes in the center of your story. And this is a total shift of perspective that turns advertising into communication. The shift of perspective turns communication into conversations. It turns campaigns into story worlds. It turns share of voice into share of attention. It turns share of mind into share of relevance. And this is what we did when we built Hero Branding. It's a super complex system now. We're working on a software for that. Brands make heroes. We used insights from science and philosophy. We uh, took all the proven methods of brand building uh, we, we knew, and we intertwined this with, with techniques of developing stories. And one of the uh, most important things within this system is the work of Joseph Campbell. Maybe you 
heard about him, Hero's Journey. Um, he worked in the 40s and 50s, um, and he found out a system how every, every good story works and the journey of the hero, how he makes his circle around, um, around an, um, an idea and theme or whatever. And he used this as a metaphor for life. He was not a creative writing teacher. He was a, um, a mythologist. So the hero's journey has 12 uh, parts. You will find that in every, in every story. Uh, if you like to watch movies, don't look at that. You can't watch a movie without analyzing that anymore. We distilled this to the hero brand journey into seven um, stations. It's the circle of buying something. It all starts with a pain, with a need, with a longing, with an imbalance. I need a coat, I'm hungry, I want a wife, I want a car, whatever. And then it's the call to action. Um, so, okay, if you want a wife, you gotta go out <laughs> to people and don't stay in the room anymore. And then you meet a mentor, the hero, is the person formerly known as consumer. And the mentor is the brand. Somebody who helps you find your, de finding your destination. Somebody who shows you, who tells you, uh, helps you, whatever. This is the brand. And there are antagonists. Without antagonists, there's no conflict. Without conflict, there's no story. So it might be high price, bad image, difficult distribution, whatever, uh, there are all the, um, uh, the competitors, uh, normally the um, antagonists. Then you make the leap of faith, then you buy, then you vote, whatever. And then you get Excalibur. This is the product, Excalibur. This is the, um, you know the story of um, King Arthur, sure you know it. Um, and this Excalibur is a fantastic sword. It cuts everything, but it has an uh, ad additional meaning. Um, when Arthur took this sword, he became king, not only because it was um, um, told around who can take this sword as king and so, but he felt he was king. Now he has this fantastic sword. He felt he was king, and this was, uh, this was the end of his journey from a fatherless, a uh, uh, um, boy without roots, without uh, a life ahead outside the woods, to the king. And he felt that he was king. He felt that he was king. And he was king because he was uh, uh, actually a, a son of the, of the real king who has died. So that's what a brand is. A fantastic product and a story. That's why this word has a name. It's a brand name, Excalibur. And then there's the pro brand. Um, most of the time, people talk about the happy end. Happy end doesn't exist. Think Romeo and Julia, what's happy at this end? But the proper end is fantastic because everybody is good now. They are together forever. This is proper end. As Aristotle calls it, the proper end. And this is important. So, it's all about storytelling, you might suppose. And when I hear storytelling, I always say, stop. It's about story sharing. Storytelling is the wrong way. It's always top down. I tell you my story, and you have to vote. And you have to buy. Listen to my story. You have to share a story with your voters, with your uh, activists, with your consumers. So what is story? Most of the, uh, of the people I meet, they have not the slightest idea of what story is. They always mix it with narrative. So, story, two things, structure and substance. The, the easiest way to construct a story is this one. There is unbalance, you want balance. And uh, to achieve this, you have to achieve something. You're in unbalance because you're lone, lone, lonely in your room, you're um, without love. Balance, I want to be loved. Achievement, I got to chase Julia Roberts or something. Or injustice. I feel injustice. I want to have justice. I have to achieve something to fight for whatever. 
there's a pain. You want to, have, you want to be a hero. You have to make a leap of faith, like Rocky. Huh? You, I'm, um, uh, I'm outside, I'm a total misfit. I want to be loved, so I have to go to fight Apollo Creed. So, substance. Story is not plot. Most of the people mix story with plot, with the narrative. This is not story. Politicians always, always think they can tell a sequence of anecdotes and there's storytelling. That's not storytelling, that's bullshitting. Story is themes and values. Story is shared mutual values. This is all about. If your brand, if your organization has values to share with an audience, then you connect through story. Nobody put it better than Antoine de Saint, -Saint Exupéry, who said, if you want to build a ship, don't trump, trump up the man in order to gather wood, to divide the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. This is story. This is a shared story. This is a shared emotion. This is a shared vision. This is story. And to find that out, you have to be um, clear which business you are really in. Uh, most of the companies uh, think they are in the, like Nike, in the sports gear business. They are not in the sports gear business. They are in the enabling business. Um, we have um, helped um, a big Austrian brand to find the brand story. It's a luxury brand, uh, underwear, high-class underwear. They thought they were in the luxury business. No, they are in the self-confidence business. Um, we helped um, a, a guy who has a martial art concept uh, with the baseline, learn how to fight so you don't have to fight anymore. So it's martial arts, it's self-defense, but it's also about what? He is not in the fitness business. He is not in the self-defense business. He in the, is in the self-liberation business. If you don't have to fight anymore, you're free. So they help to self-liberate. Um, this is the first and important step. Find out in which business you are really in. Um, then there is another thing. Sympathy versus empathy. A character doesn't have to be likable. Not at all. He has to be empathetic. Think of, I don't know, anti-heroes like uh, Melvin uh, in, in, in uh, As Good As It Gets. In the first scene, he puts this dog down the uh, trash can and says, this is New York, my friend. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And we love him. Um, the most famous character is an anti-hero uh, in Disney. It's him. Why? It's not Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is a nerd who is best friend with a cop. Give me a break. This guy shares a story with us that is so strong, and it's a story, shut up. Um, it's the story of injustice. Donald Duck is always treated unjust, and this is something everyone can relate to. You are in the supermarket cashier, shortest row, and then the person in front of you buys one bottle of Coke and needs 10 minutes to get out his money. And I think, this is unjust. They are all gone, 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 and I have this fucker in front of me. Or if you, uh, you wish to be a billionaire and the good fairy makes you a billionaire and you wake up but you're Donald Trump, oh, this is unjust. <laughs> Story needs empathy. And if you understand that, you find out that there are not so many stories on the planet. Uh, there are different concepts. Some people say there are only two stories. Stranger gets to town, boy meets girl. That's a little bit easy. But there are concepts that say there are only six stories, I'll say 36 stories. And most of the other uh, stories you, you come across is, are variations. Take King Arthur. You turn the parameters like uh, time and place. Uh, you have Star Wars, the same story. Pardon me? Sorry. Oh. Um, Wall Street, same story. 
Hamlet. Switch parameters, you have Sons of Anarchy. King Lear. Switch parameters, you have The Sopranos. If a story is not about the hero, he will not listen. And a great and intriguing, interesting story is about everyone or it will not last. So tell stories about people. And I have to hurry up. Uh, so, yeah. And if you, if you do this good, if you do this perfect, um, so, and you share a relevant mutual story, your audience will share the story amongst them. And your story will steadily grow, and then they sh uh, the, your audience shares the most valued possession. And this is the only parameter, from my point of view, to, m to measure success. If you get their time, time with brand. This is the most important thing you can get, time with brand. So stop advertising and share a brand story, dude. Otherwise, there's only one topic left you can talk about. The price. And nobody wants to talk about that. So is this true for every company, for every organization? No, totally not. But for the successful ones. <laughs> so this is 30 seconds. One important thing. Reading list. You've got to read these three books by Stephen Pressfield. Important. They are small, easy read. You have to read them. About procrastination, how to ever overcome them. Joseph Campbell, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. No easy read. Uh, the Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler, who uh, transformed the idea of Joseph Campbell into um, story writing and story. No easy read. Okay. Uh, but this, these are the most significant books on story. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there's one more thing. No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>